Greetings, my name is Kathleen, and I want to share a story that sticks out vividly in my mind. This story happened a few months ago, and I feel it is necessary to share it to shed light on recognizing toxic behavior and how important it is to confront it. I am 31 years old, and my immediate family consists of my husband Anthony, 34, and our kitty. Anthony and I are high school sweethearts. We bonded at a young age, and despite attending college in different states, our relationship has remained strong. Next month, we will celebrate our 13th year together. But unfortunately, my mother-in-law, Carol, will not be invited. From the beginning, Carol has harbored a dislike for me. Having two sons, she always pampered and indulged them from infancy. In her eyes, no one was worthy of her precious boys. Anthony and his older brother David basked in their mother's affection, oblivious to her controlling and manipulative nature. As they grew older, Carol's overbearing tendencies became a problem for her teenage sons. Dating and socializing with girls outside of school was forbidden, and sleepovers with friends were threatened with punishment for any misdemeanor. Despite the obvious signs, Anthony and David, captivated by their mother's love, did not recognize her control. In time, David, a school acquaintance of mine, began to rebel against Carol's rules by mischief and spending time with girls, which got him into trouble with his mother, and even resorted to threatening his then-girlfriend. David, however, developed a backbone and refused to give in to Carol's influence. When Carol tried to chase away Lauren, now David's wife, he stood firmly in her defense. When the brothers turned 15, they gradually drifted away from Carol. Unsurprisingly, she did not approve. Anthony, although recognizing his brother's actions, considered them excessive. In the early stages of our relationship, I refrained from commenting to avoid possible conflict. I was unaware that Carol would direct her efforts at me, using every means possible. Carol sought to destroy our relationship. She organized an elaborate tour to Venice during the prom to prevent us from going there together. Despite Anthony's pleas to cancel the trip, it was the only time he went against his mother's wishes. Every time Carol called me, hurling a barrage of insults and deeming me unworthy, Anthony remained passive, offering no defense. Carol even went so far as to predict that I would be unfaithful when I went off to college. As we both secured spots in different colleges across states, Anthony succumbed to the pressure, leading us to take a brief break. During this hiatus, Carol took advantage of the situation, celebrating our apparent breakup with Anthony unexpectedly. Anthony reconciled with me, infuriating Carol. In response, she intensified her harassment and humiliation, seizing every opportunity to make my life miserable. In an attempt to address the issue, I approached Anthony, expressing my grievances. Anthony, your mother is consistently disrespectful towards me. Despite my efforts to be friendly and welcoming, she berates me and hurls insults. I'm growing weary of her behavior and you need to address it, Anthony responded dismissively, defending his mother. Kathleen, you know my mother is a bit sensitive after what happened with David. She fears losing me as well and genuinely believes she's looking out for my future. Don't take her words to heart. Infuriated, I pressed further. So you're okay with how Carol treats me? Remember, she tried to break us up. Anthony justified Carol's actions, claiming she was trying to prevent potential heartbreak. Frustrated, I challenged him. She played on your insecurities to end our relationship. How can you justify that? Despite my efforts to make him see my perspective, Anthony remained unconvinced. He insisted that Carol could do no wrong and accused me of falsely accusing her. Even David, attempting to reason with Anthony, faced resistance. Anthony accused David of betraying their mother, creating an awkward and strained dynamic between the two brothers. David ultimately married Amy, his high school sweetheart, the same person Carol had tried to scare off. Although David invited me to the wedding, he deliberately omitted to inform Carol, leading to her emotional distress. Carol desperately attempted to persuade Anthony to intervene and secure an invitation for her. Anthony, known for being a mama's boy, engaged in a heated argument with David about Carol. Initially reluctant to attend the wedding to support Carol, Anthony faced my challenge, questioning whether boycotting the event was justified given Carol's history with David and Amy. I pointed out Carol's persistent complaints about Amy supposedly taking David away from her during high school. 
Attempting to diffuse the situation, I asserted that it was a misunderstanding, acknowledging that mothers can sometimes become overly involved. I emphasized the importance of family, urging everyone to mend bridges and refrain from holding grudges. I reminded Anthony that the decision of whom to invite to the wedding rested with David and Amy. I emphasized the need to respect their autonomy, discouraging any requests. Despite my inability to attend the wedding, I expressed my concern that they might be making a mistake. Planning to RSVP the following day in the hope of influencing their decision, highlighting the potential consequences, I warned Anthony that not attending the wedding might result in being cut off by David and Amy. After much deliberation, Anthony eventually agreed to attend the wedding. I felt optimistic that this decision might bring positive change, allowing David and Amy to enjoy their happiness without interference from Carol. They chose to organize the wedding far away to prevent Carol from showing up. However, Carol's reaction was intense. When Anthony showed her pictures from the wedding, she cried on his shoulders and insisted on his company. For a month, Anthony even canceled our planned Colorado trip to make amends with her. Witnessing how he handled the situation left me feeling pretty heartbroken. Despite the certainty that our love ran deep, breaking up was no longer an option. My only hope was that Anthony would come to his senses regarding Carol's troubling behavior. Fast forward three years, and Anthony finally proposed to me. Carol, displeased, put on a facade of happiness for him. Yet, I later discovered she had refused to give him her engagement ring, convinced that I was a gold digger and our marriage wouldn't last. I loved the ring Anthony chose for me, a testament to our financial independence as engineers. Carol's jewelry was the last thing I desired. Wedding planning became a nightmare as Carol inserted herself into every aspect, from cake tasting to venue selection. Disapproving of my vintage theme, she deemed it boring and tacky. Despite my indifference, Anthony and I carefully considered every decision. Frustrated, I confronted him, insisting that his mom needed to give us space. This is getting ridiculous. We're the ones getting married and your mom needs to let us decide on our own. I don't need her input on everything. She hates every decision I make. You need to tell her to back off. Anthony defended his mother, claiming she wanted the best for us. Tired of this excuse, I argued she deserved to be uninvited from David's wedding due to her interference. Though welcome, her negative remarks about my choices were unacceptable. This was our wedding, and she already had hers. After much coaxing, Anthony finally asked Carol to back off. Though she threw a fit, she toned it down. Unfortunately, Anthony prioritized her choices and made several changes. Initially sad, I recognized it was also his day and chose to go along in some places to avoid further trouble. I had not yet found the courage to stand up for myself, and Anthony seemed lost in a fog, unable to think clearly. The wedding turned into another disaster when Carol showed up in a white dress, so sparkly and lacy that it resembled a bridal gown. Fortunately, Anthony recognized the issue and insisted she changed before the ceremony. Feigning ignorance, Carol claimed she didn't have another dress. However, my maid of honor and best friend came to the rescue, producing a pale blue gown that fit Carol perfectly. Anticipating her intention to wear white, I had purchased a decent dress for her on my dime. With no excuses left, Carol had to wear the provided dress. During the reception, she delivered tearful speeches about losing her children to awful women, targeting both me and Lauren, who were avoiding her. Carol also disparaged our relationship, portraying herself as the victimized mother-in-law. The wedding attendees looked uncomfortable, and even her own family was mortified. My maid of honor swiftly took the microphone. Redirecting the atmosphere on our honeymoon, Carol incessantly called us, reaching out to Anthony and crying about feeling lonely. She bombarded us with five calls a day, and when unable to reach Anthony, she called me, accusing me of taking her son away. Just a month after the wedding, she insisted that no matter what I did, he would always choose her over me, asserting that he would never love me more than his mama. Attempting to reason with her, I explained that we were on our honeymoon and she needed to stop calling us so frequently. When Anthony's phone died, he went back to our room to charge it, emphasizing that there was no intention of keeping him away from her. Kathleen, it's clear to me how driven you are by greed. 
your sole focus is on extracting money from him, ignoring the fact that he supports me financially and genuinely cares for me, something he's been doing since his father passed away a decade ago. Carol, you may be his mother and it's natural for him to support you, but I am financially stable on my own and have no interest in his money. Stop falsely accusing me of trying to exploit him. Enough with your baseless accusations. You might deceive him, but I see through your intentions. Hand over the phone to my husband. I need to speak with him urgently. During our honeymoon, I endured numerous conversations like this with Kathleen. When we returned home, dealing with her incessant crying became a daily struggle, all because we didn't take her along. Even now, she scolded my husband for going without her. Anthony, as always, did his best to console his mother, overlooking my concerns. I was gradually finding my voice to stand up for myself. Things were relatively stable until a few months ago, when I discovered I was pregnant with our first child. Excitement filled us, and Anthony wanted to share the news with Carol immediately. Despite my reservations, I agreed. However, instead of joy, Carol reacted with tears and accusations. She accused me of trapping him with a baby, insinuating that I had cheated on Anthony. Despite my husband's attempts to calm her, she remained obstinate. I grew weary of her dramatic outbursts, which persisted for three weeks before she decided to visit us. Carol arrived unannounced, seemingly happy about our baby, showering me with gifts. Anthony was relieved, thinking Carol had finally accepted our child. The truth, however, was far from that. I felt a sense of unease about Carol's newfound happiness and decided to approach the situation cautiously. In the evening, she offered to make us tea, claiming it would help warm me up as the weather was getting chilly. Anthony appreciated her gesture, giving me a triumphant look as if to say, I told you so. Choosing not to dismiss my concerns, I excused myself and went to the kitchen to check on Carol. I observed her preparing tea and adding something from a carton. Both my husband and I are lactose intolerant, using a specific brand of oat milk for our tea. However, Carol was using a different carton that caught my attention. She used oat milk for one cup, but opted for the suspicious carton for the other. Initially, I assumed she was merely using a different type of vegan milk for variety. Despite this, my unease persisted. When she handed me the suspicious mug, feeling a sudden panic, I impulsively switched my husband's cup with mine when they weren't looking. We drank tea, and throughout the evening, Carol seemed to smirk at me from across the couch. Fortunately, nothing untoward happened for the remainder of the night. However, in the early hours of dawn, I heard my husband vomiting in the bathroom. He made several trips, and the noise woke me up. After a while, I saw him lying on the living room couch in pain. Concerned, I approached him and inquired about his condition. Carol, emerging from her room, looked worried at the sight of Anthony's distress, breaking into an ugly cry. It suddenly dawned on me— this woman had used cow milk in our tea. I was prepared to confront her, but before doing so, I had to rush Anthony to the hospital. I dialed 911 urgently, requesting an ambulance for Anthony, who was experiencing severe stomach pain and was on the brink of passing out. At the hospital, we waited for the medication to take effect. When the doctor arrived for a consultation with Anthony, I brought Carol along. In the presence of both Anthony and the doctor, I coerced Carol into confessing to everything. She was concerned about her son, so getting her to confess wasn't a challenge. The doctor expressed disappointment and informed us that Anthony needed to be hospitalized for a day. After the doctors left, Anthony seemed troubled. The fog in his mind began to clear, and he questioned Carol about why she used milk in his tea, knowing about his allergy, he pointed out that their household didn't even have cow milk, and Kathleen didn't consume it either. Carol insisted that she didn't intend to harm Anthony, claiming she was aware of his milk allergy. Anthony was perplexed and demanded an explanation. Carol continued sobbing in a corner, prompting me to reveal the truth. I explained that Carol brought cow milk into their home not for Anthony, but for me. It was not meant for him to consume— and I had switched their cups when Carol wasn't looking, prioritizing the health of our child. It turned out to be the right decision. Anthony, shocked and disbelieving, accused me of lying. He couldn't fathom why Carol would want to hurt him and our child. I urged him to ask Carol for an explanation. 
emphasizing that I had taken precautions to safeguard our child's health. Carol erupted into a cacophony of wails and screams, reaching such a fever pitch that a nurse had to usher her out, a move no one objected to. At that point, Anthony, visibly shaken and traumatized by Carol's actions, apologized profusely and pledged to keep her out of our lives. Witnessing Anthony's pain, I offered comfort as best I could and took him home the following day. During his hospital stay, I seized the opportunity to change the locks on our house. Anthony called Carol, firmly informing her that we were cutting all contact with her for good. This decision triggered more cries and pleas from her, insisting that as his mother, he couldn't sever ties. Anthony resolutely rejected her pleas, highlighting how her actions had harmed our family. He emphasized that he wouldn't tolerate it any longer. Acknowledging that he had been blind to her detrimental influence, Carol confessed her motivations, admitting that she sought to hurt me and make me suffer because she felt neglected. Anthony, unyielding, deemed her actions unforgivable, especially considering the potential harm if I had consumed the tea she prepared. Expressing his disgust, Anthony firmly rejected her presence and cut off all communication. We changed the locks to prevent her from entering our home, and when she attempted to force her way in, we called the authorities, blocking her on phones and social media. We informed our extended family about the situation, and their unanimous disapproval further isolated Carol. After discussing her actions and reviewing evidence from security cameras and her confession to the doctor, we successfully obtained a restraining order against her. Though she tried to gather information from our extended family, none entertained her demands. We withdrew financial support, prompting her to secure a job at Walmart to support herself. Gradually rebuilding our relationship with David and Lauren, Anthony and David resolved their issues through a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Lauren and I, already good friends, strengthened our bond further. My husband, having come to his senses, shielded me from Carol's influence, and we eagerly anticipated the arrival of our child, with an agreement not to allow Carol any relationship with our future family. Enjoying the newfound peace in our household after Carol's departure, we considered moving to David City after our child's birth. Uncertain about the future, we remained positive that we would overcome any challenges together.